Hello gamers, my name is Spark, and today I'm going to show you an awesome, one-of-a-kind tool that you can use at your D&D or other TTRPG table. In this video, I'm going to show you a housing generator. This is a great tool for GMs, and if you're a player and you think this sounds fun, send this over to your GM. This generator should work for any TTRPG. Here's how this video is going to go. For starters, I'm going to show you the basics of how this tool works and how you can use it at your table. Then I'm going to show you what's happening behind the scenes to make the generator function and how you can customize it to better fit your campaign. In the last video that we did, I showed you a city generator and one of the sections of that city generator was property for sale. It was after I created that portion of the city generator that I knew that I needed to create a housing generator that was separate and distinct and allowed us to flesh out more fully a property generator. So this generator is specifically for housing or residential areas that might be for sale in any given municipality that your players might be interested in either purchasing or perhaps there is a quest happening in a property that is for sale. So let's start off up here at the top looking at the settings for this generator. We have the number of stories. You can have up to five stories on this property that's for sale. You've got the size of the property. You've got the condition of the property. You have how much land is this property on, or if the players were to buy it, how much acreage do they get with it? And you have who is selling it. You also have a few other settings here. Include sale price allows you to generate an actual sale price in gold pieces that your players would have to meet in order to purchase the property. You can turn that off if you don't want to. You just check that box to turn that off. You have the contact, and the contact is the person that your players are going to go to to talk to about potentially purchasing this property. If you don't want a contact generated, you can turn that off. And then up here, you have whether you want to be using the Imperial or the metric system. In other words, are we using feet or are we using meters? And then how many properties do you want generated? You can generate between one and three, or you can set it to random so that it will choose for you. Now, before we generate a collection of properties for sale, I want to show you one other thing here in the settings. And you'll notice that we have five drop down menus that are saying random or you can change it to custom. Now notice that when you change these to custom, their corresponding checkboxes are all grayed out. This is the generator notifying you that now whatever boxes you have checked in here doesn't matter. You see, if you have it set to random and the checkboxes are all turned on like this, then it'll randomly generate a building that's either one, two, three, four, or five stories tall. But if I uncheck this first one, then it will no longer generate buildings that are one story tall, it'll only generate buildings two through five. And the odds of a building that is two through five stories tall is equal across the four positively checked checkboxes. In this case, there's a 25% chance of a two story building, a 25% chance of a three story and so forth because that's how odds work. If I were to uncheck another one, then we have a 33% chance of each of these and so forth. However, when you switch this to custom, it no longer operates or generates based on the checkboxes. It's going to generate based upon an odds table that I'm going to show you in the second half of this video when we get into customization. So I just wanted to show you that you can select either random and have the odds be equal based upon the checkboxes, or you can set it to custom, in which case the odds of results will be more customized to the percentages that you have set there, which again I will show you in the second half of this video. Okay, with all of that being said, let's come over to this checkbox right here, click Generate, and take a look at some properties for sale. You'll notice that we have generated three different properties that are for sale. Let's take a look at our first one right here. This is a large four-story dwelling in poor condition with no land. Constructed from light-colored adobe with a shallow red roof and a sagging white door. So you do get a description of the property's appearance, and then you get some details about the land that it's on. In this case, you learn about its flora, fence, garden, well, shed, and other ornaments. Flora is barren, so this property is barren of all vegetation. There is a short fence, a hedge of roses. There is no garden, there is no well, there is no shed, and there is a totem pole, for some reason, on this property. Now this was randomly generated, all of these were randomly generated, that's the whole point. This is a random generator. We can come over to details and we learn who the contact is. So the owner is Quentin Sagekeep. He's an adult male dragonborn, and they're the one who is selling it. They're selling it for 1344 gold pieces. It's about 3,300 square feet with six rooms, and there's no additional space. 
So this particular additional section is a place where they might mention that there's an attic for sale or some other availability that isn't included in what we've already talked about. And then you get a brief history of the property. So this says this property was built recently and has never been sold. It has elegant crown molding in every room, but unfortunately an angry gin is trapped in the door knocker. So that gives you something fun to play with as a DM. And there you go. That is one property that's for sale. Uh, you have two other ones down here. If you want to pause my video and take a look at those, you certainly can. But basically, it's a very simple generator, and you can tweak all of these settings to determine the type of building that you want to have generated. I will point out down here in this ornaments section that sometimes we get results that are a little bit too long for the box, and if that ever happens, you can just change the size of the text up here at the top, and now it'll fit so that you can read the whole thing. I also want to point out right here where this says it's being sold by the owner, friend. What that's saying is Bregwin here is a friend of the owner. So the friend of the owner is the person who's actually the one in charge of selling this property. So that's what that means there. And then down here we have an example of it's being sold by the lender, in this case the banker. So in other words, you can probably assume that the previous owner of this property defaulted on their mortgage or something. And so now the bank is trying to sell it. You may also have noticed that we have six rooms, six rooms, and five rooms, and that might seem like a lot, but again, remember we have size turned on for possibility of huge. If we were to turn those off and see that we only have tiny and small houses for sale, we only have two rooms, two rooms, and two rooms with a lot smaller square footage. And so, yeah, you can definitely play with these settings to produce the types of results that'll fit the town that this property is for sale within. All right, the next thing I wanna show you is if we scroll down, we'll see that we have a storage system down here. We call it the housing market. And we've got stacks one, two, three, four. You can expand with this little plus button over here on the left. You'll see that we have a section here that mimics the area above, but with no data in it. If we scroll back up, the reason we have this storage system is because everything in here in our results are all what we call dynamic cells. So if I come over here on the side, just click delete, watch what happens to all of these cells. You see how they're all cycling through. The reason for that is because they're all dynamic cells. So when you change anything anywhere in this generator, everything will reset. And that can be problematic if you've just generated some properties and your players are interested in some of them, and then you accidentally click something and then they're gone forever because they will be gone forever. Once these things cycle, you can never get them back. And so we need to have a way that we can save them. And that's what the housing market section is down here. So what you're going to do if you want to save a property or if you want to save all three, what you'll do is you'll just copy whatever range you want to save. Let's say you want to save all three of these properties. You're going to select all three of them. You're going to copy. You're going to come down and you're going to click on the top left up here, not in the stack, but, but mimicking the exact place that you copied above. You're going to come down there. You're going to right click. You're going to paste special values only. And you'll now notice that all of that information is here. And if I click delete, nothing cycles. So this allows us to copy what was above and paste it down here where it will not be a dynamic cell any longer. Now, I do have to warn you, do not just click paste. Let's see what happens when I just click paste, just normal paste. You can see that things went wrong. Uh, they're not functioning correctly. They're not formatted correctly. And if I click delete, they are cycling through. So that's not helpful to us. So do make sure that you right click paste special values only so that you can maintain that data correctly. Now what you can do with this information saved in here is you can come up to the notes section, type whatever it is you want to in there so that after you've minimized it, you have notes on what is inside of stack number one. And then you also have up here where it lets you know that stack number one has zero openings. Meanwhile, stacks two, three, and four all have three openings. So this allows you to know what's in your storage system without you having to open up each of these sections to see what's inside. When you're done with property that you've previously saved and you want to clear it away, you're just going to select everything and press delete. And you'll notice that this says we're back to having three openings. You can minimize that and we're good to go. And that concludes the basic functionality of this housing generator. This isn't my only generator, by the way. I have dozens of others that I think you'll find interesting. This table that you see on screen now shows all the generators that I've created and which of them, at the time of publishing this video, have video tutorials like this one. All of my random generators will have video tutorials available for them eventually. All of my generators are available for purchase on buymeacoffee.com for just a couple bucks. Links are in the description. 
If you're enjoying this video, now would be a great time to share it with other gamers. Please hit the like button and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. So now let's get into customization. It's customization that sets my random generators apart from all the others. If you're a widely experienced GM, this probably isn't your first random generator that you've ever toyed around with, but it will probably be your last, because no other tool has allowed you to customize the code and the master lists so that you can personally craft your own spectrum of results. So let me show you how to customize this generator. You're gonna come down to the bottom left corner where you see that there's a housing ref tab. You're gonna click on that, and you're gonna start off by seeing these four sections that are currently minimized behind these plus buttons. And it's inside of these sections that we're going to customize the entire function of the generator. So let's expand the appearances section. Oh, and of course you'll notice really quickly that we have appearance, land, details, and history as our major sections. If we look back at the generator, those are our four sections in the results. So each one of these four sections in the results corresponds with the customization sections on the back half. Let's start off over here on the left with the size of the property. You are going to ignore the gray and the blue cells. Don't edit anything there, that's just functionality. But scrolling down underneath that, you do see this custom size odds table. And this is where you can customize the likelihood of the size of the property when you have size set to custom. So remember I talked about that a couple minutes ago. When you have size set to random, it'll just function based off of these checkboxes. But if you set it to custom, the checkboxes no longer play and it pulls the data from this odds table right here. I'm going to explain how to use this odds table really quick and then I won't explain it again because we do see that the odds table exists in a few other places in this generator. Basically how this works is you just set here in this row with these percentages right here, you set the likelihood of that particular size. Notice though that these five percentages all add up to 100%. You can change these percentages. So if you wanted a huge dwelling to be less likely, you can change that to 5%, but notice that this has dropped to a total of 95% now and we want it to total 100, so we need to put that 5% somewhere else in this list. And so if I plug it back up at the top, then you'll notice we're back up to 100% and now the generator will function correctly. If this does not equal 100%, the generator may not function correctly. So do not edit any of these cells on the right. Those are just function. And then do not edit these cells either. Those are also just function. You can edit the percentages. Just make sure that they add up to 100. And so this is where you can customize the likelihood of the size of the properties that are going to be for sale in the generated results. Scrolling to the right a tiny bit, this is the settings for the state of the property, also known as the condition on the main screen. Again, if that's set to custom, then we have the custom condition or state table right here that functions the same as over here on the left. Again, ignore the gray and the blue. Now we have the stories odds table right here. That's for this part of the generator on the front end. And that functions the same as before. You've got the odds right there and ignore the blue cells right there. Scrolling to the right a little bit under land, you're going to ignore everything except for these two tables right here. So this first little table is where you can determine how many acres are going to be generated when greater than one is the result. So if we come back here, you'll notice that greater than one was one of the acreage options. And if I turn all these other ones off, you can see that we're getting over here on the left where it says a fair sized three story dwelling in good condition on three acres. But if I cycle it again, you'll notice that it comes up with five acres. So there is some random generation there and that comes from these two numbers right here. So what do you want the minimum number of acres to be generated if it's greater than one? And what do you want the maximum number of acres to be generated? You can theoretically bump that all the way up to 30. And if we come back over here and look at the results, we can see that it's generated up to 15 acres on this particular property. So you can change these two numbers to affect how many acres are going to be potentially generated when the greater than one is the result. And then you have the custom acreage percentage odds table right here for when this is set to custom. So scrolling to the right a little bit, we have our materials section. If we look back at our results, we see that this says constructed from plant covered lattices. Where did that come from? That came from this list right here. If we scroll down, we can find plant covered lattices right here in the list. And so what this has done, what the generator has done is randomly selected something from this column. 
Now you'll notice that this list goes on and there's a lot of white space down here. This is what we call an infinite list, meaning that you can add to this list infinitely and have the generator still function. This is another one of those functions that's used multiple times here, so I'll just explain this once. If you want to add something to this list, something that could be potentially generated in the results, all you have to do is come to the bottom of the list and add the new thing, whatever it is you want to add in there, and now it's entirely possible that new thing will be generated over here in the appearance. When you want to remove something from the list, if it's at the bottom of the list, you can just delete it like that and it's not a big deal. What you can't do, let's say you wanted to get rid of the bone and clay, if you delete it out of the middle of the list like that, and now there's a blank space in the middle of the list, that can break the generator. And so rather than doing that, what you're going to do when you want to delete something out of the middle of the list is you're going to right click, delete cells, delete cells, and shift up. And now you'll notice that we've deleted the bone and clay option without leaving the blank. And so that's what you're going to want to do, which does mean that you do have the ability to customize all of these infinite lists that are present in the generator so that you can generate whatever type of properties that you want to by adding or removing. So understanding that principle for the material is exactly how the roofing and the door work as well. Remember in this particular result it said that it has an asymmetrical red roof and a round blue door. We have asymmetrical red for the roof and we have a round blue for the door. So these are infinite lists, you can add or remove to those. Okay, so that completes our appearances section. We can minimize that back and open up the land section. And pretty much what we're looking at here is a bunch more infinite lists. So everything here, we have flora, fence, garden, well, shed, and ornaments. These are all infinite lists, add or remove to those. But we also have some odds up here in the orange cells. So what are the odds of there not being a fence? 50% in this case, but as this little pop-up box says, you can change this percentage. It can be anywhere between 0 and 100%. By the way, anytime you see a little black triangle, like what we see right there in that 50% cell, anytime you see a little black triangle, that is a pop-up. Just hover your mouse over that and it will pop up for you. There's additional information in there which you might find helpful. And so again, we have percentage chance of no fence, percentage chance of no garden, of no well, of no shed, or percentage chance of there being no ornaments. So you can change all of those percentages. Otherwise, all you're going to do here is just add or remove to these lists to customize them as you see fit. That's it for the land portion. Opening up the details, there's a bit more here on this one. So as far as who we're contacting, if we come back here, remember in this case, we're contacting uh, Jan for Pain, the adult male dragonborn. So what are the odds that the contact is male, female, or other? You can change those. Ignore the blue cells. And then this one is racial odds. What are the odds that the race is from a dominant or a minority race? Where does that come from? That comes from right here. So this is the list right here where you're going to adjust which races are dominant and which races are minority in your world. So you'll want to customize this based upon your setting. So the fact that our particular contact over here was a male dragonborn, there was a 45% chance that they were male, and then there was a 75% chance that they were dominant, and once it selected that it was dominant, it randomly selected out of this list. Now, in this case, our contact was Jan for Pain. Where did that come from? We have a list of male names, we have a list of female names, and we have a list of surnames. The list is quite lengthy. As you can see, I'm scrolling down. We have about 500 first names for you and about 800 surnames for you. So plenty of variety there. But again, you can add or remove to that list. Then we have an odds table for the age of your contact. And then the odds of who the seller is, whether it's the owner, the lender, or the municipality. That's what MPTY stands for. And so you can change those. And then this bit down here with seller, titles, owners, all that kind of stuff, you can ignore all of that. That's just part of the function of the generator. Scrolling to the right a little bit, we're here with sale price. And in this green cell, you're going to see that it says there's a base price in gold pieces, 2,500. This is where the price of the property always starts. Every property that is for sale starts at 2,500 gold, and then that number gets modified based on all of these tables that are below, which I'm about to explain to you. You can change the base price to make it higher or lower, but then what happens is we start with the base price of 2,500 gold, and then we start multiplying a bunch of modifiers based upon the details of that property. So for example, if that property is only a single story, 
then we're going to multiply the 2500 gold by 0.8, or in other words, reducing the price. But then if it's a large property, so it's a large one story property, we're going to take that same number, the number that was 2500 times 0.8, and multiply that by 1.3. So in other words, we're adding value to it. Same thing with condition, and same thing with acreage, and same thing with the additional space, whether there was a cellar, attic, or basement. We didn't really get to see that in those other results, but you can see on this randomly generated one, it does include a cellar. And so if it has a cellar, that'll add an additional 5% of value to it. And so these four tables are the main ways in which we randomly generate the value of the home based upon the details of that property. Now to add some additional variety to it, we do have this last little bit right here where it says include random element. And if you say yes or no, right, you can turn that on or off. But if you have it turned on, then what it will do is it will randomly generate a number between zero and one. That's why it says min and max. It'll randomly generate a number in there to add some variety to the prices so that we're not always getting the exact same prices for the exact same types of properties. I just included this to add less predictability to the generated results so that whatever prices you got were also inclusive of other factors that we may not have mentioned here in the generator so far. But if you want it to be more predictable, you can just turn that off. And I do have three black triangles there if you want to know more information on how that works. You can read those yourself. Okay, scrolling to the right a little bit more, we've got square footage. In this case, uh, this particular property is 1800 square feet. So where did that number come from? What we're going to see now are some min-max tables. You've already seen these. You encountered these over here in the appearances section when we said how many acres comes with the land between two and five. That was the very simple min-max table. So looking over here, it's the exact same principle, but with just a few more options. So if the property is tiny, the square footage will be between 150 and 500 square feet, or if we're doing the metric system, between 45 and 150 meters. You can change these numbers. You can change the minimum, you can change the maximum on all of these for imperial and metric. Just make sure that the minimum is always equal to or less than the maximum. If you have the minimum greater than the maximum, it will break the generator. And then down here, you have a min-max table for the number of rooms included in that property based upon the size of that property. So if it's a fair-sized property, then it will have between three and five rooms. Again, you can change those numbers as well. And then scrolling to the right just a tiny bit more, over here we have additional. What are the odds of there being a cellar, an addict, a basement, or no additional? You can change those odds. And you can ignore the blue. And that concludes our details section. The last one is history. History, of course, referred to this section over here. And all this is is four columns of endless lists. Up here in the gray cell, you see we have kind of a Mad Lib. And this shows you the sentence structure that is going to be used in generating the result. And so you can see this says, this property was built and if we look at the results, that's exactly what it says. This property was built, and then it randomly selects something from this list and plugs that in in the results. So you have time, sale history, unique feature, and complication. We've got several options in there for you, so hopefully you never get the same thing twice. But again, you can add a remove to all of that to customize it for your world. And that is how you can customize the housing property generator. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, I have dozens of other generators, so please be sure to check them out here on YouTube or at buymeacoffee.com. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and happy gaming.